What's up everyone, this is Jamie Bateman with Labrador Lending, and today I wanted to discuss a really powerful method of overcoming one of the potential disadvantages to investing in mortgage notes, and that is by investing through a self-directed retirement account. Um, mortgage notes don't have any inherent tax advantages as an asset class themselves. Um, Investing in real estate, for example, does. You know, you get depreciation, you can do a 1031 exchange, you can often take your gains at the capital gains, long-term capital gains tax rate versus ordinary income. Um, so there's some inherent tax advantages to investing in hard real estate, such as owning a single family rental property, for example. However, with mortgage notes, there's no such benefit inherent to the asset class. Um, so what can you do about this? Well, you can invest through a self-directed retirement account. And I recently interviewed uh, Jason DeBono with New View Trust, and I highly recommend everyone go check that interview out. It was really, really informative, I thought. Um, I, learned a, I learned a ton through that interview. And he's with New View Trust. There's some other companies out there, Quest Trust, Mid-Atlantic, Equity Trust is another one. So. I'm not promoting any of these companies, but um, definitely uh, do your research and, and um, you know, a lot of them have education through their platform that's, that's well worth the, uh, the time. Um, speaking of education, I mean, this is something, the self-direction in and of itself has kind of grown in the last 15 to 20 years, I'd say, but it's nowhere near where it should be, in my opinion. A lot of people don't even know about self-direction. Um, you know, maybe they do, but they don't, they, they just think it's too much work or they, they just aren't informed or, or don't have the, uh, you know, wherewithal to take ownership of their finances. But to me, this is a really, really powerful way to go. And if you are a note investor and you're looking for capital, um, which is a, you know, no matter who you are, you're going to run out of capital at some point if you're running a note investing business. Well, working with those more passive investors who have funds in a self-directed IRA can really be a, bene a very strong way to go. Um, what is self-direction? Basically, it's just picking your own investments, right? So instead of opening up a, a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA with Schwab or Vanguard or one of the other major financial institutions where someone is, where you're, you can invest in stocks, bonds, or just put your money with a an investment advisor to kind of babysit your money. Uh, those accounts are strictly, uh, you're able to invest in public, publicly traded assets. You're not able to actually do self-direction, even though some of them kind of claim now that they have self-direction, but that truly is just self-direction in, into publicly traded stocks and bonds. Whereas I'm talking about investing in mortgage notes, real estate, cryptocurrency, other asset classes through a self-directed retirement account. Um, so the IRS sets the rules for these types of accounts, and that's true whether it's self-direction or not. Um, so, you know, certainly do your research. I'm not, I'm not providing investment or legal advice here, but this can really be a powerful way to go. So I'm just going to hit a few of the highlights of these types of accounts. A traditional IRA versus a Roth IRA, if you can qualify for a Roth IRA, I think it's a fantastic way to go. Um, when I say qualify, if your income is too high, you may not be able to contribute to a Roth IRA in a given year. However, uh, there are certain things like backdoor Roths and that kind of thing that you can take advantage of. But a traditional IRA, and this is self-directed or not, is where you're taking a, a, a tax advantage up front because you're getting a tax deduction because you're lowering your income for that year so you're not paying quite as much in the way of income taxes at the federal or state level uh, because you're, that amount that you're contributing to your, your traditional IRA is not counted as your income. However, you do have to pay taxes on that money when you pull it out. So it's really a tax deferred account and whereas a Roth, you're paying the taxes up front getting that pain over with and everything that you pull out later on is tax-free. So it's not tax deferred, it's tax-free. Um, my wife and I both have Roth, self-directed Roth IRAs that we invest in notes with. I buy performing notes or partials 
uh, try to keep it as passive as possible, but um, I think it's a fantastic way to go. Um, and again, if you have a, you know, maybe you had an old 401k from an old job, you can actually convert that over to a traditional IRA, and then you can actually pay the taxes on that and potentially convert that to a Roth IRA. Um, there's many different strategies to check out. And again, I'm, we're not going to go through every specific scenario here, but those are two of the major, uh, the most common uh, type of accounts with self-direction is a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA. Some other types of accounts, um, a SEP IRA if you're, if you're self-employed, a uh, SEP IRA or a solo QRP. Uh, Jason DeBono was really speaking highly of the solo QRPs uh, if you're, if you're self-employed. Um, solo 401k or solo QRP uh, were two really big ones that he thought were extremely powerful if you're self-employed. So I recommend going researching those. Also HSAs and ESAs, so health savings accounts and educational savings accounts are really powerful. The HSA, there's actually a double tax benefit. Um, you get the tax savings upfront and also on the tail, tail end, so that can be a strong way to go. ESAs have gotten a lot more popular. Used to be just the 529s that people talked about. ESAs is a way to save for your uh, children's education. I believe it's a $2,000 limit per year, so it's not something you can, you know, gas up immediately with a massive contribution, but it can be a very powerful way to go. Also, checkbook control. There's actually three different ways. And again, Jason talked about the three different ways to invest through NewView specifically. Um, one is to go through a custodian without checkbook control. The second is have checkbook control where the custodian actually manages um, or oversees, I guess, your, your LLC. And then your LLC will buy notes individually. So you're actually managing those notes through your LLC and the custodian uh, oversees your LLC in a sense. So that is your kind of traditional checkbook controlled uh, uh, IRA or tax advantage account. Um, and then the third way is through the, the solo QRP. He talked about how there's actually built in checkbook control with the solo QRP. So again, I'm hitting, you know, these are broad brush kind of uh, highlight points that, that I'm going over here. Obviously, do, do more research on your own. There are a few, there are two asset classes that are prohibited, uh, life insurance and collectibles. You cannot buy in these, in, in retirement accounts. Um, so even if you're self-directing, when you are self-directing, they're, they're, it's almost unlimited as far as the asset classes you can invest in, um, but those two are off, off the table. Self-dealing is another thing to look out for, and running a business is another thing to look out for. You've got to remain passive if you're doing this. Um, you can't be running a business through your IRA or your traditional IRA or self-directed account. Um, and there are certain uh, prohibited transactions that relate to self-dealing. People that are very close to you and your family, uh, sometimes uh, you cannot transact with. But other than those few, uh, I guess, you know, uh, things to look out for. There's so many things you can do within these accounts. So uh, mortgage notes, I mean, ways to invest in mortgage notes through a self-directed account, buy whole notes, buy performing notes. I prefer performing notes that are, that are equity backed and that are, you know, with strong pay history as opposed to non-performers. People certainly invest in non-performing notes through their self-directed accounts. Nothing wrong with that. It's just you've got to be careful that you're not, you know, uh, undertaking or participating in too many transactions where the IRS potentially could tell you that this is a business that you're running through your self-directed account. Um, so I like to keep it a little more passive at using my own self-directed IRA. I've also bought, bought several partials through my IRA, and it's, it's just a fantastic tool. Um, so therefore, you, you know, through this method, you're getting, you're taking advantage of the tax advantages of the self-directed accounts, these retirement accounts, and self-directing by buying uh, mortgage notes. And so that way, it's a, it's kind of a, 
double whammy, all the benefits of mortgage notes, but also the tax advantages that don't inherently come with mortgage notes. Um, so buying whole notes, buying partials, and lastly, investing in a note fund is a phenomenal way to invest through your self-directed account. Um, Chris Seveny and I have the Integrity Mortgage Note Fund that we're currently taking uh, raising capital for and we'll be buying assets very soon. You can go to integritymortgagefund.com to check that out. I also have a, some information on my website, labradorlending.com. And so uh, a lot of people who don't have the time or inclination to manage notes themselves will invest in a, in a note fund through their self-directed retirement account.